At the end of this online module, you should be able to copy a single element from an array and assign it to a variable using linear indexing, and copy an array from a larger array and assign it to a variable using linear indexing. There is another very similar module on copying values using array indexing. Here is a problem to explore while learning to copy values from arrays using linear indexing. An engineer is working on the design of a treadmill and needs to better understand the speed at which users start their workout. Distance and time data have been provided for two users using a treadmill at resistance level 7. The engineer had assigned the data set in the table to a matrix, but would like to parse the matrix into a few different variables for other analyses as follows. Assign user 1's time value at 20 meters to a scalar. Assign user 1's distance column to a vector. Assign user 2's third through fifth data points to a matrix. We will use linear indexing to copy the highlighted values in the matrix to separate variables. So what is linear indexing? Let's look at a theoretical array. Linear indexing addresses an element in the array using a single value. Notice how the elements of the array are subscripted. The single value, or subscript, is determined by counting down each column, then moving from left to right. When you want to use or refer to any value in an array using linear indexing, you need to make reference to the location of the values of interest using the subscripts. For example, say we have assigned our data for our problem to a matrix. How would I reference the value of 16.8? I have to use the variable name for the array, user underscore data, and supply the position number of the element 16.8. When I begin counting at the upper left, I start at 1 and end at 6. The second column counting starts at 7, and I end at my desired value at position 11. Therefore, the MATLAB command for identifying the value 16.8 is user underscore data, open parentheses, 11, close parentheses. Linear indexing, as opposed to array indexing, is often used with vectors, since there is no second dimension to worry about. In this column vector, we just count down the first column, ending at the last value, as there are no other columns to the right. Here is an example when the vector is a column vector. What is the linear address of the value 30 in user1 underscore dist? The value 30 in the vector is the fourth element, so the MATLAB command is user1 underscore dist, open parentheses, 4, close parentheses. It works the same when the vector is a row vector. The indices just count from left to right because there is only one value in each column. So, what is the linear address of the value 5.1 in dist1 underscore time1? The value 5.1 in the vector is the second element, so the MATLAB command is dist1 underscore time1 open parentheses 2 close parentheses. In MATLAB, I have entered the original data in a variable named user underscore data. It is a good practice to copy pieces of an array to new variables if they are going to be used in other computations. This makes it easier for someone else to follow the code. I will use linear indexing to create a variable for the value in yellow at the right. I want to copy user1's time value at 20 meters, which is 9.1, to a variable called user1 time 20m. As with all new variable assignments, my new variable name goes to the left of the equal sign. Then I use linear indexing to copy the value 9.1, which is in the ninth position, to my new variable. Notice that the user1 time 20m variable now exists in the workspace with the value of 9.1. The next thing I want to do is to copy the user1 distances to a variable. Linear indexing is possible for copying multiple values when they can be referenced using vector notation. I am copying values at indices 1 to 6, so I will create a variable named user1 underscore dist on the left of the equal sign, and on the right I will reference my original matrix user underscore data, open the parentheses, put the vector notation for 1 to 6, I will use 1 colon 6, and close the parentheses. When I hit enter, I have a new variable named user1 underscore dist, which is a vector with the appropriate values. Note that with linear indexing, I get a row vector rather than a column vector. Finally, I want to copy the block of data from user2 highlighted in orange at the right. 
When copying a block of values, linear indexing is more difficult than array indexing because there is not a continuous set of indices for the values. In this example, the linear indices of the values I am trying to replace are 15 to 17 and 21 to 23. Indices 18, 19, and 20 are skipped. So I will type my new variable name, use the equal sign, reference the original matrix, and put a vector of the indices I want as the reference. Notice that this is still linear indexing as we use the linear indices within the vector and there is only one input in the parentheses. That is, one vector is the input. I see that my result gives me all of the right values, but assigned it to a single vector rather than a 3x2 matrix like the orange highlighted values at the right. Let's see what happens when I try to make my vector input a matrix calling the 15 colon 17 indices, then a semicolon to make the matrix go to the next row, and calling the 21 colon 23 indices. Ooh, this is close to what I want. Notice here I am getting a 2 by 3 matrix. That is because my input matrix was a 2 by 3 matrix. So if I manage this by transposing the input matrix, what happens? Ah, I get the correct output matrix that I am looking for. As a side note, I can do this much more easily using array indexing. In summary, we can reference elements in an array by using linear indexing, using a single number position to indicate location. This is counted down the columns, then moving from left to right. Linear indexing has one input to identify the indices, or subscripts, to be referenced. That input can be a scalar, a vector, or a matrix of subscripts. For vectors, the elements are more commonly referenced using linear indexing. Finally, linear indexing is very useful for replacing one element or a set of elements that are continuously indexed. However, it can also be used with an array of subscripts.